Let's move on. Next segment. A lot of new updates happening in Europe for full soft driving. Uh, some of them sound good, um, but it's not like it's not a done deal. But it sounds very very good here. Uh, so uh, first, a roundup. Uh, we already knew about Netherlands. Tesla is pushing hard for national approval. This, their their body is called RDW. It, they they have a demo scheduled in February. And if it's approved, it will unlock most of the EU via mutual recognition. But uh, people are just cautiously saying this is just a demo on February. It doesn't mean it's going to be approved in February. It means that they're going to have to show this to Netherlands uh, regulatory body to see if they'll approve it. But movement in Spain. Spain just granted Tesla's nationwide FSE testing permission. So from January... 2026 to July 2028, they can test 19 cars. No safety driver required. All public roads, remote monitoring allowed. Biggest testing approval in Europe so far. That's good That's news. Big. And then the other one here is we're starting to see videos now <laughs> because Germany, France, and Italy have allowed Tesla to invite public the public for free FSE supervised passenger rides in major cities, Berlin, Paris, Milan, Rome. I'll show you that those videos. And then another point here is EU-wide. New license driver's license rules now require ADAS knowledge in theory and practical tests. It's going to become mandatory by 2029. Some countries earlier, drivers will be officially trained on systems like FSC supervised. Okay? I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> driver's license rules means that they're not... I don't know. They're not like saying no necessarily. What's your thoughts on any of these? I, I think this is going to be nonlinear. I, I've said this a couple times before, but I, I, I just forget about the, the continent you're in. If you're just a human being and you sit in an FSD 14.2 vehicle from Tesla and you experience it, it's, it's going to be very difficult for you to, yes, there are, there are issues, but it's going to be very difficult after you go through the data from Tesla where they have the accident statistics, they have the intervention statistics, they have all this information, and then you sit and experience it yourself, it's going to be very difficult for you as a regulator to say, you know what, uh, yep. you know, we're going to hold for whatever. Because what we're finding is, is there's no other alternative at scale. So there's something here that's safer and the data says it. And now I, I, if I'm, I'm a regulator and I can actually experience it because it would have been a little sketchy. Like again, 1329 was the best thing to all of us that were testing it at the time, but it had its set of issues. Uh, 142 is, is a set as a level of polish on it. 1421 that you can really start expanding the exposure to regulators. So I, I, I just, the net of this is, I think it's going to be nonlinear. I think you're going to start mm -hmm. seeing approvals and, and you, then they'll start to snowball because one country will just look at the other and say, well, well, they did it. I mean, South Korea is a big one. Mm -hmm. Australia is a big one. Of course, uh, North America, this is really, and this is what I don't, I think we have, a statistics and analysis, a basic problem in the community. Cause people talk about, well, the FSD adoption rate is only 12%. Don't, I mean, go, go look this up, but Tesla ships something called FSD all over the world, but they're the only places where there's FSD supervised is about a third of the fleet. So a third of the fleet has the 12% adoption rate but these i think people are thinking about the total fleet of 12 percent of 8 million or 9 million vehicles mm -hmm. and two-thirds of that fleet has basically you know a highway assist type feature package it doesn't have this point to point address to address full self-driving capability until the, it gets approved like in in per the list you just went through so I actually think the adoption rate is going to go up. I'm hearing anecdotally from from people that are using the trial that like this, they're like this is this blows me away. This is unlike anything we've tried before, unlike anything I've seen before. 
So I think that was a, a master stroke by Tesla to initiate the free trial before Thanksgiving weekend in the United States, probably, and for the next month, which will get you into Christmas. Those are two holidays where you're going to get the most exposure, where you can have family members showing family members and friends showing friends. The only thing about it is in the Midwest and and parts of the East Coast, there's going to be a lot of snow. But if we have time, we'll talk about that. I was thoroughly impressed with how it, it how it how it performs on snow. Yeah, I saw that you did that. I um I had two phone calls from family members, friends who were who found out about the free FSZ trial, and then they were just calling me just to make sure they understand it all. So it was it was it was good news. And then you were talking about how FSZ is, of course, uh, now. Uh, launched in south korea and i think only just snx for now but it's going to expand quickly their news outlets have been producing you know <laughs> uh, episodes on it segments on it explaining how great it is it's being well received around the world now europe is starting to get their vid videos coming out and like you said it's almost all very very positive um actually the version that they're using in europe is actually the latest version so it says, uh, come experience FSC supervised on your local roads. This is directly from Tesla. Ride along in a passenger seat to experience how it handles real world traffic and the most stressful parts of daily driving, making the roads safer for all. Available now in Italy, France, and Germany. So they have all these regulations. And so that's why they could, you'll see that the words are different and, you know, have to be hands ready. Yon uh, Tatsai, one of the engineers of Tesla's autonomy, says experience the autonomy future. And uh, asked, this person asked, what software version will it be? And Yon Tassai said, latest and the greatest. And then, yeah, sorry, you want to make a comment on that? I, I just going to, I keep thinking about FSD and the fact that it's not a fixed heuristic piece of software. It, your car has a model running in it and your car is receiving input from cameras in making decisions based on the model in that in the car and that model is being updated every time well we don't know the exact frequency but we know there's obviously a huge update with v14 the point is is this this just continues to get better as new things or new scenarios get thrown in front of it new new edge case, it just continues to improve and that's a very special it's not a manual thing. It's not. It's not mostly a manual thing. That's a very. That's a very special product. It's a very unique product. I, I, I would be surprised if a year or two from now, if we're not looking at magazine covers or you're talking about like the invention, you know, of the year of the decade, and it's not this. It's not this. It, it, I would be surprised. There, there, there would have to be whatever there, yeah, i think you shocked. might be surprised though <laughs> i may be surprised i may be surprised because <laughs> yeah. apparently yes. you know our, our cars could could literally start <laughs> uh talking to us and um spontane which they already are okay. and it doesn't get it doesn't get covered but um that's a different conversation <laughs> but i would be surprised if this is not viewed as literally the invention I mean, we talk about chat G chat, chat gpt all the time and I, I, I think on every level, this is, this is better. And everybody on the planet, it needs to get into a vehicle and be transported at some point during the day, during the week, during the month. So this is not everybody needs chat GPT. Not everybody is, has to have an LLM in front of them. I think it is going to be, I, I think they're important and I think they are going to be a car, a core part of everything, but everybody needs transportation. So I think this is, as this gets wider and wider exposure, this is going to be critically acclaimed. I, I, I do think that will happen e even, I've, even through all the noise. I think it will happen. Yeah. Okay. I, I hope you're right. And I think you're right. On Wednesday, my family flew in right for Thanksgiving and I drove them on my car, of course, and showed them. And so that's why it's, it's brilliant that Tesla did this during the Thanksgiving. Lots and lots of new people have experienced this. But it wasn't, it was perfect. 
except for navigation issues. Yes. And it, you know, I had to break, uh, uh, why did it take that road? And, you know, why did it choose to go that way? So, so my, my, you know, family members in the car said, oh, you know, it's, they weren't, they weren't like blown away. That's really the next day they dropped 14.2.1 auto updated the car. And then it's been flawless for the rest of the, the, the holiday, the weekend. And so now it's like, yeah, all of them walked away going, oh my God. <laughs> this this it was OTA thing. Quickly that... that point one. Yeah. OTA auto, automatic, by the way, Jeff, why did they, this one, it felt like it was an automated one where you didn't have to do anything and it just automatically updated. And sometimes they wait for you to decide I'm going to update it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I still don't even, I don't have that version, um, yeah. yet. But the, just Tesla's ability to update this fleet. Remember, these cars have different hardware configurations. There's even I, I I firmly believe that they've that there's you know micro revisions of the computer. Now, don't quote me on that, but I wouldn't be surprised. I've dealt with multi-year production of, of things before. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's you know there's there's changes where they would uprev the hardware or they would decide. The point is yeah. is there's a lot of hardware configurations out there and for them to be able to roll out OTA like this across hundreds of thousands, if not a couple of million vehicles, the way they do that in itself is a competitive advantage. We don't have another car company that I call it a car company. We don't have a company that updates that produces robots on wheels or robots of any form that can update software like this. The only close proximity are phones, smartphones. Yeah, it's very, it's very impressive. Okay, let's watch a few videos of um, FSD in uh, in Europe. This is happening now. We're seeing more and more of these videos, and uh, so far it's been flawless. This Bettina Schmidt pointed this out, a madness, dear EU regulatory authority. It works. <laughs> Experience it yeah. yourself. The best driver in the car is not yourself, but the FSD driver. Um, and uh, this is the video that he was sharing. I think this person on the left is a Tesla employee, right? And this person on the right is the passenger because that's the rules that they have to have. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be boring. <laughs> I'm going to skip her out here. Yeah. It, basically, nothing happens here. Oh, I guess I missed that one. Okay. I mean, just think about it. you're in a new country. I, it's like this rental program from Tesla too. I hope it goes to other countries because quite frankly, I would feel a lot better. I, I, I do not rent cars in other countries. Maybe I, I would in, in Mexico or Canada and that would be okay. But when I'm in Europe or right. in, in Asia, I'm, I'm a little bit... Right more uneasy because i'm worried i'm just gonna i'm gonna misinterpret a road sign or i'm gonna forget like when i'm in in the uk that i should be driving on the other side of the road but with mm -hmm. fsd i that would that would be a game changer if i could just literally get in and my phone app which already has all my tesla settings i i'm in another country i sit in all my seat settings all my music and everything even the the last setting i had for fsd if I'm in hurry mode, it would just set it. Mm -hmm. It just, to me, it's it's a game changer. Yeah, I was in Japan, same thing. My daughter asked me, hey, could we rent a car? Would you be able to drive left a uh, different side of the road? All sorts of signs. <laughs> I said, I don't think so. First of all, I, I'm not. I'm absolutely not used to driving on a different side of the road. I think I, I said I could figure that out. But if you look at the um, the street sign, the street lights, it, it's very confusing. Many of them actually have red lights, and you're supposed to go straight. Yeah, I think there's three lights and one of them is referring to one of the lanes and it's red, 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 and you're supposed to go straight for your line. So I got to figure this out, right? And and not make a mistake. Uh, here's another one. It said, uh, Peter Schmidt, it was fantastic to experience FSC in Frankfurt. Unfortunately, I only recorded 15 minutes to have the opportunity to speak with the driver as audio recordings were not permitted. A great ride without any interference, of course. Uh, 15 minutes worth of his drive. Um, yeah, he's not allowed to speak to the driver, so they're focused on it. Um, again, it's going to be very boring. But you can see the car is driving in in totally different city, different uh, signs, different words, language. 
different rules. Yeah, different kind of cars. And this is what this is what these testers are out there. They're doing. They're like, okay. Are there any edge cases we miss? Is there anything? And what, what's nice is Tesla has a very quick way to label what's not done correctly and correct it and, 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 and correct the behavior versus having to create all this from the ground up and create all these rule sets from the ground up. This, you know, this car knows how to drive wherever it goes and it can adapt very quickly and then you're just dealing with minor edge cases they wouldn't have done this though if it wasn't already ready you know like it's already they've been doing it for yeah. probably a long time and now they're going okay we were absolutely for sure ready <laughs> this is flawless in this area um this is the actual data i thought it was oops let's get this out hold on where this guy, FSD Italy, he's starting to produce lots of videos and he's showing you the actual screenshots. FSD demo was performed on a late 2025 Model 3 running 14.1.7. This is, you know, uh, I think 14.2 is the latest, but it's, it's going to be updated very soon. Interesting findings are three labels that appear before a maneuver, and that is EU compliance. So if you look at this one here very closely, it says FSD supervised hands ready mode, hands ready mode only. And then over here it says guide autonoma, uh, which means it's uh, self-driving. Uh, uh, you can set the speed on this one. And then, yeah, you can actually set the, you can scroll it up to set the uh, how, how maximum speed. And then initiating left turn maneuver. So be three seconds before you actually, it actually does it, it has to tell you what it's going to do. No, not necessary, but, <laughs> you know, compliance with the the rules. Interesting. And then what yeah. do you think about the hands-ready mode instead of hands-off, hands, uh, hands, off, hands free? I think it's just the, the terminology that they want by region. That's a quick, easy thing for, for Tesla to do. And, yeah, at some point, I, I would think that the the AI... And this is where Grok could come in and say, okay, what country am I in? And what are all the regulations for this country per the latest ADAS and and you know and hands out driving code, whatever, whatever the regulate whatever the regulatory body framework and documentation is. At some point, right now, Tesla is manually going through these things. That's the right thing to do. But I'm assuming at some point Grok would be able to go through them, interpret them and provide output to the actual Tesla AI framework in computer in the vehicle and or, you know, back for training back in the, the central office in, in Texas. I, I, would, I would think at some point Grok would be able to go and find all these and mm -hmm. also just be aware. This, to me, this is part of the offering of working with Tesla is this is a very, it's get, getting through a regulatory body. I've done this many times before with either setting up manufacturing or getting a product qualified in a country. There's a lot of, you have to read documents, you've got to process mm -hmm. them, then you've got to review your results with the regulator. I'm just thinking like, what if Grok can go and pull these documents, analyze them, analyze them for changes between revisions, what changed, and then actually go over and look at the code and say, all right, here's this portion of the code that's set aside oh, for some sort of yeah. regulatory lookup table. And okay, mm -hmm. okay, here's, you know, you'd have to have some sort of sanity check on it to make sure it's not, mm -hmm. it doesn't, you know, lose control or, or hallucinate on something. But I, I would think you'd, you'd be able to marry Grok in mm -hmm. Tesla AI here to XAI and Tesla AI together to go out and find this information and turn it into valuable input. Yeah. That's brilliant. By country. Are, and by the way, that could be part sure of the selling yeah. to these countries of like, we're going to make exactly. sure we have the latest and greatest. We're going to have, our AI is going to run and, and make sure yeah. that it's going out and doing it. And we're going to have some sort of manual audit that goes in and verifies it.